This is my first podium win. I need to check. I need to check with power. Recently, I made a video about not getting dropped in Zwift races. That video did all right, seemed well received. I have learned that you cannot be in contention for a podium place or even attempt to sprint finish if you get dropped easily in a race. It seems obvious. So I thought I'd make another one and share my progress and maybe help others like me who are new to the world of Zwift or just getting into Zwift. I'm still a heavy bloke. I'm getting lighter and I'm a lot lighter than I used to be, but I'm still relatively new to Zwift. I've raced in 30 races now so far. I've climbed out to Zwift in 100 minutes and I know next to nothing about Zwift except what I've learned through trial and error over the past five months of throwing myself in at the deep end. Just before Christmas last year, I joined a fitness gym for the first time. However, I found myself using their static exercise bike more than anything else in the gym. I enjoyed using it. I got up a good sweat and I burnt loads of calories on almost a daily basis doing it. During my London Marathon training back in the day, the training book I religiously used regularly mentioned using an exercise bike as a training aid to my running to give my legs a break on my rest days and to complement my running through strength training. I have purchased a new book. This book was recommended to me by Google. So it has to be good. So both of these things combined kind of stuck with me. And in April this year, just over five months ago now, I purchased a Watt Bike smart bike. I downloaded Zwift and I created for myself a basic pain cave in my garage. I used some space that I wasn't using and I made it work for me. Fast forward five months, 30 races later, and yesterday I not only finished with the lead pack, but for the first time I came in third. I placed on a podium spot. I need to check. I need to check with power. This video is about how I finished on the podium in a Cat D Zwift race. And if you're new to Zwift, or if you're not new to Zwift, but trying like me to win more races, then I'm making this video for you. Right. Three weeks ago now, I ran 100K for fun. <laughs> Cute. And in the build up to it, I spent four months pretty much running every day and swifting in between. On the back of this training, most noticeably, my overall FTP jumped up to 232. My sprint spiked at 658 watts and I could sustain above 350 watts for over a minute. My normal pace of 20 minutes was about 240 watts. These are not amazing numbers, but they were good enough to keep me competitive. And that's all I want to be in Zwift. I want to be competitive. I don't want to race on Zwift to be coming in last or even mid-pack. I want to be in with a chance. And that's what this video is all about, being in with a chance, keeping up with the lead pack and hopefully finishing on a podium. My first focus before I even set foot in the garage is food and energy. When I race, I throw everything I have into that race and I've learned the hard way that low energy levels almost always come from a poor diet or simply not eating enough. I'm not light, I can't sustain the pace of some of these races without throwing absolutely everything I have into it. And I've noticed that my heart rate can now get into the 190s and I average in the 160s throughout the whole race. I know that if I do not eat the right food with sufficient calorific value for the race, that day, then I just won't have enough energy to carry me through. Just having an energy gel just before or during warm up isn't sufficient. Seems obvious, but this was proved last week when I raced on stage three of the Get Rolling series of races that Zwift has put out this month. I'm racing this evening, it's Friday night. Um, this race I'm doing is stage three of the Get Rolling races. Stage three looks good, it's a London Classic, and I remember it being particularly tough because of a 6% heel where I got dropped. I'm done and I completely burnt out within the first lap. I'm currently in a 10 week calorie deficit diet. See my last video on my new training plan for the details, but I simply hadn't eaten enough that day or the day before to sustain the amount of effort it takes to drag my heavy frame, my weight, around the course in a competitive or even respectable time. Right, this is where it all goes wrong, man. This hill. Oh my God, this route is so hard. 
I finished the race, but I got off the bike at the end and I had to lie on the floor for 20 minutes until the room stopped spinning. I then had a shower, I ate a decent dinner, went to bed, got up and ate a larger, still healthy breakfast. And then I went again. I got back on the same race. So this is my second attempt at the stage three Get Rolling London Classique route. I did it two days ago at, no, did I do it two days ago or was it yesterday? I've got Scarlett with me again, supporting me. It was yesterday. So I've been on a calorie deficit diet for the past two weeks where I've been surviving on about 1500 calories. However, it doesn't put me in a great place when it comes to bursts of energy and uh, loads of endurance. Got dropped really easily. I wasn't anywhere near my threshold. So today I've had about a six, 700 calorie breakfast. Uh, yeah, we've got just two minutes until this race starts. This time it was like someone had put the game on easy mode for me. I kept up with the lead pack, zoomed up the hills, and even managed a sprint finish. I mean, it wasn't a sprint, but it was a sprint for me. Okay, 25 seconds. Let's get the gears up. I wanna stick with the front. My point here is make sure you give your body what it needs to do. If that is simply eat more that day, like it was for me, then do that. I'm not gonna tell anyone what to eat as I'm not a nutritionist, but you don't need a PhD to know that skipping breakfast and going straight into a high intensity 45 minute workout is not optimum. Equally, a fried breakfast is probably best avoided as well. Okay, I've got a feather, which I'm gonna use on that hill that takes us up to Trafalgar Square. So this hill that's coming up now, the one that veers off to the right, is a tough one. I've now ridden this course four times, I think, three or four times, and I've been dropped on it every single time. In my warm-up, I had a practice run, and with the lead pack, this is a tough old hill. It's not so much the gradient, it's the length of it. Here we go. My next tip is start racing and don't stop. Don't wait to start. If you're new to Zwift or you're, you, you're not necessarily new but you haven't raced yet, just start. Keep racing and race as regularly as you can. I mentioned previously that my FTP jumped up to 232 and my overall 20 minute racing power had reached the dizzy, crazy heights of 240 watts. This was on the back of regularly training and pretty much racing and or running every day. Just to context this, I started five months ago where everyone else does on a very low FTP. My legs are on fire! Whew. Come on! He fell and he fell. One minute left! Ah! I've just got the FTP test data here and I averaged 142 watts across the entire 45 minute FTP test. I then took a two week break on Zwift after my 100K run. Cute. And my numbers on the last few races were off those peak numbers pre 100K. This shows that sustained growth comes from a consistent approach and having a week or two off does make a difference. To add to this, I also get comments on my Zwift videos from people like me who are new to the world of Zwift, who want to race but don't know where to start. I started where everyone else does, on the start line. I joined a race, I joined any race, the first one I found, and I started racing. I started pedaling. The outcome didn't matter to me. My FTP didn't matter to me. My average watt per kg didn't matter. My body weight was annoying on, on hill climbs, but I didn't care. My cadence, my RPM didn't matter. I didn't care about my max capacity heart rate. My average heart rate didn't matter to me. I didn't know what normalized power was. My 20 minute wattage didn't matter and my sprint was non-existent. But what did matter was that I was racing and with every turn of my legs, with every kilometer covered in this computer game world, I was improving and I was improving at a breakneck pace compared to the person that still sat on the sofa watching TV, making excuses as to why today is not that day. And most importantly, I was learning. Oh. My legs. Oh. When I started to get better, when I started to feel better, I looked for small wins. I looked for the small gains. But by then I was hooked. 
and I was already racing and looking forward to my next race. This point is just to start racing and keep racing. Don't compare yourself to others. Just be better than you were yesterday. Just go and get on your bike and give it your best. This leads me into my next point. I made the physical aspect of racing on my static smart bike in the real world as comfortable as possible. And I removed as many of the things as I could that were a barrier to me being competitive in Zwift, that were a barrier to my motivation to get on the bike. The first was the pain cave itself. I made sure everything was connected properly and all I had to do was walk in and press start. This is race, oh man, I haven't got my laptop. Scarly! As fun as racing on Zwift is, like running and hitting the gym, sometimes I don't feel like smashing my heart rate up into the 190s. Sometimes I don't fancy hitting a concrete floor in exhaustion after a race. So I need to ensure that when I do motivate myself to get out and into the garage, that I don't have to mess about with cables or connections and I can just get on the bike, press start and go. Then I kept forgetting my towel. So I treated myself to a colorful bunch of towels that I thought I wouldn't forget, but I still forget. Oh, I forgot my towel, one second. I bought and installed a decent and powerful remote control fan and I pointed it directly at my face and my torso during all races. So at least I wouldn't overheat. So the fan is a VacMaster. I got it off the Watt Bike website and then setting three. I also bought myself a pair of decent cycling shoes and cleats. And now I'm physically attached to the pedals on my bike for every ride. These made a huge difference. They helped me get my legs up and over the top of the circle when riding, which allows me to then put more power down into the swing. These were a great investment and I'm pleased I got them. I also bought myself a silly hat just to remind me not to take myself too seriously. And all of these things made the ride, the process of riding easier and more efficient. I wasn't overheating thanks to the fan. I wasn't wasting energy through poor form in part thanks to the shoes and cleats and I wasn't avoiding racing due to a poor setup or messy pain cave. YouTube. I'm a huge fan of YouTube and the wealth of knowledge it opens up. If you need to repair your washing machine or change the oil in your new car, then you watch a YouTube video on how to do that. I did the same for Zwift. I watched a load of great Zwifting YouTubers who shared their knowledge and experiences and mistakes sometimes whilst live streaming. My legs are weak, my knees are screwed. Kaboom! And that is how we do the Zwifty. I'd re recommend watching at least cycling at Jake Sanders Snowman Cycling or at Zwifty Zwifter. All three of these are my personal favorite channels. They're great, fun, and you know, they're very honest. They all talk a lot about racecraft and how to race well. I now weigh just under 107 kg. And I've just been overtaken. <laughs> Let me see if I can catch them up. That's made it fun. Right, up again. I weighed 116 kg when I started five months ago, and I'm still going down. I'm never catching that pack. But for now, I'm still really heavy in the world of Zwift, and Zwift isn't very forgiving to heavy riders. But that doesn't mean that there are not some things I can do to help me or at least give me a fighting chance. 
The first is to know the race course in advance, at least know where the climbs are. I don't memorize the course, but I do make a note of where each of the climbs are, and then I know where I need to attack. I don't attack the other riders, I always attack the hills just before a climb. This is a tough old hill. It's not so much the gradient, it's the length of it. Here we go. I try to move towards the front of the lead pack, or at least right behind them, and then I throw everything I have into that climb, trying to move ahead of the pack, if only for a short time. There's no point me trying to save energy for the sprint if I get dropped on the first or second climb. All right, press the feather. So I push the climbs, and now I've reached a point in my racing that I'm actually able to drop other riders on a climb too. When I raced the London Classic course, I again attacked the hill on the leading and it put me in second place, leading the pack. Attacking the climbs puts you in a fighting position. And I know now not everyone else does this. They save their energy. Oh my God. We made it. Didn't get dropped. Knowing they don't attack these hills puts me in a dominant position rather than a losing one, even if it's brief. They always end up catching me when we get to the top, but it gives me a small advantage at that moment, at that point in the race. I had managed to drop more weight and I moved down to 106.9 kg and entered into my first race and then my second attempt at the London Classic race of the Get Rolling series last week. The second race was a redo race. My first attempt at the London Classic was so abysmal, I knew I had to do it again quickly. So this piss poor attempt didn't stick in my memory as a valid one. It was far from a valid attempt. I didn't want to include it in this video, it was so bad. Oh my God, this route is so hard. In my second attempt, the day after, I got off the line well. <laughs> first rule of Zwift, always get off the start line with the lead pack. Attacking this first climb hard landed me at the top in second place and it forced the pace early on. Watch this guy in red as he pulls away from me. I've learned that in Zwift there are two things that happen when someone seems to pull away this easily, especially this early in the race. They're either sandbagging or they get sucked back into the lead pack over the course of the rest of the race. Hey, he's not, we'll catch him. He's on his own. Very rarely do early breaks like this stick in Cat D racing. Here we go. So we get to the top of this first climb and the rider in red storms off. Then another rider in light blue looks to chase him down. And I also should have chased him down. I regret not going for it. These two then spend the rest of the race trying to push their lead. Interestingly, when I looked on Swift Power afterwards, the guy in blue was removed. And the guy in red finished in first place with an average 2.6 watts per kg. So he just looked like a decent Cat D rider. I pushed the other smaller hills and go for an attempt at a sprint finish. It was an attempt. I've also learned that everyone else is knackered. The in-game avatars are very deceptive. They lead you to believe that everyone else is holding back whilst you're dying or gasping for air. When in reality, almost everyone is in the same boat and giving all they have. It's easy to think that everyone else racing is superior, has superior endurance, or has a superior sprint. And sometimes they do, but not always. It's nice when you hold your own. You start to see glimmers of hope or light at the end of the tunnel, and you realize that being dropped isn't a guaranteed thing to happen in every race. I now had momentum. I had confidence from these previous two races, and I took that with me into the get rolling stage, stage three race on RGV. So sit rep, I'm on the bike. We've got three minutes. I'm on stage four, get rolling RGV. Golden rule Zwift is know the course. Not knowing this course isn't gonna be an advantage. So I really need a win. My last race two days ago was the closest I think I've come to a win. I think if I'd got the timing better and maybe not as 
maybe not push my gears as high as I did, I probably could have done better on that sprint. I probably could have got a few more watts, which I think would have given me the edge. Because I don't think anyone in that group had an explosive sprint. So I, I, I had a good chance of coming in on podium. The, the other thing is also, when I looked on Zwift Power, a large portion of the field was removed for whatever reason that they're removing Zwift Power. So I had a really good chance of coming in on a podium. So I'm gonna go into this with the mentality of sticking with the group, get to the end of the race, and then hopefully have enough in me for a sprint. Okay, 10 seconds. Oh, I'm a bit nervous. I actually feel like I've got a chance. Three, okay, let's do this. Oh, it's a fast start. The first race was all right. It started off really fast. It was really disconnected. Two riders leave the pen pushing in excess of six watts per kg. It's already strung out on the line. This is a fast start. And I struggled to try and catch and stick with them. Because of this, no main pack formed until about 1.5K into the race. Okay, so this is good. So we've got a nice group here. And hopefully we can rein in the two that went off a bit lively. The two riders, two seconds ahead of me, made sure the pace was ridiculously fast and they just kept fighting to push further ahead. Hopefully they'll get gassed. Interestingly, the guy in second place ahead at the moment struggles to keep up with the leader. It's a lot of effort to do this route on your own or just two of you, especially if you don't work together. And it looks like one of them with the steering is steering intentionally out the way. So, I've seen a few people do that now, which I don't really understand. Surely if you're off ahead, you've got more chance of winning if you work together. But, what do I know? I'm just a newbie cat D. And does eventually fall back into the lead pack later on in the race. But this chap in first goes on to win and does so over a minute ahead of the rest of us in the chase pack. And this comes back to my earlier point I made. Don't bother worrying about those that break away. Just race your way. They're normally just one or two riders. Too strong for you. So all you'll do is puff your, yourself out. Or they're just mega overconfident. And they will eventually fall back into the lead pack. If they are a rare breakaway rider in Cat D, then they deserve the win. If they're pushing this early and if they're pushing this hard. And if they can sustain that, then good luck to them. Anyway, getting back to the race. Then at 11k, I see another rider make a break for it. It seems this course is breakaway heaven and no one wants or needs the pack for drafting. I go for it and try to close him down, but Cat D Tron Bike Man casually drops five watts per kg and maintains the gap. Then another rider powers through, pushing 6.5 watts per kg and goes for a break as well. Interestingly, neither of these riders end up on Zwift Power. They're removed for whatever reason. We then hit the big climb at 13k and I power into it as best I can. If I tried to close down the previous two breakaways, I wouldn't have had the power to push into this climb. So I'm pleased that I didn't bother. Well, I did make an attempt, but you know, I gave up halfway. We then leave the climb, form a small chase pack and push on to, for the rest of the race. Again, the end of the race is another example for me of how much everyone I'm now sprinting is gassed. And with a small sprint, I'm able to win a small move up in position and not concede anything. I'm happy with my effort. Annoying so many were removed from Zwift Power, I'd rather come in completely last and have everyone in Zwift Power than come in last, have everyone removed and finish in first. But on Zwift Power, I finished this race in fourth place. Then, just two days later, I attempted the RGV course again. Right, can you plug it in for me? That was a rush, crikey. I was late getting onto the race and only managed to get into the pen with a few seconds to spare, so no warm up. And I pushed off the start line as expected. I've had zero warm up, here we go. It's when the pack 
starts pushing 40 kilometers an hour is where my heart rate goes up. A nice lead pack formed of about 15 or so riders and in the same again, about five seconds behind us. On this course, where it's mostly flat for the first 50% of it, if you don't get into the lead pack off the start line and within the first one kilometre, you'll never make it back on. It's important that you don't get dropped on the start line. Thankfully for me, nothing much happens between now and the 13K hill climb. No crazy breakaways and we stay together. Once or twice the pack moves ahead naturally and I have to catch up to avoid losing the wheels, but that's no big deal and I feel so good at this point, I even contemplate pushing a small breakaway myself as a tester to see how other people react or to see if we can't drop any more off the back. But I choose against this for fear of losing energy for the climb. I'm in such a good position, I don't want to jeopardise it. Okay, we're doing 40 KPH, going in. It's mine. Seven, please. Oh my goodness. Didn't get seven. Okay, here we go. We hit the climb at 13K. I'm slightly behind the pack and I power into it. I'm not quite where I want to be. I'm too far back, but I'm not yet out of the running. I then push the climb, try to close the gap and get myself to the front. And then we get to the top of the climb. My heart rate's spiking, but I know I can't rest. It's now been completely strung out and it's forming into two small groups. And there are three or four up front that I realize I now need to catch. So I start to push the pace again. I stop and let the momentum pull me down to allow the lactic acid in my legs to clear. If I keep pushing, it makes no difference. So I may as well stop pedaling and allow my legs to recover. I don't want to let the free up front get away from me. And I know those that have dropped back are completely gassed and have zero intention of working with me to catch them. I drop my aero boost and I go for it, knowing those behind me won't try to come with me. And amazingly, I catch back on. I am now in the lee pack going into the last section of this race. I stick with them, push some of the smaller rollers, desperately trying to allow my heart rate to come down, knowing that I still have the big rollers yet to come. I push through these really hard rollers, not only sticking with the lee pack, but on occasion pushing the pace. <laughs> I know we've still got the sprint finish and I've used everything to climb the hill. Chase this lead group down, keep with them and then climb these rollers without getting dropped. I don't have much left in me to sprint. My heart rate maxes out in this race at 192 BPM. I'm completely broken, but I've got the adrenaline of being able to stick with the lead pack into the sprint to keep me going. I can see I'm starting to get dropped, ironically, on the downhill section. So I push again and get back in front for another roller. It is funny watching the other two leaders panic, drop nearly six watts per kg when they think I'm trying to make a break for it. Whereas in reality, I'm just trying to use the momentum of the roller to just catch them back up. The two leaders then push off the front. I don't have anything left. If I did, I would have pushed as well. I then go for a sprint finish, but I'm completely done. I have nothing. The guy I'm racing has in excess of six watts per kg, and I just don't have that to give. I was really happy to take fourth place in this race overall. I need to check. I need to check with power.
But, and it is a big but, on Zwift Power, I come in third. This is my first podium win. I'm absolutely over the moon with this. Uh, if I'd had a sprint, which is the next thing that I'm going to work on, I could have easily have come in third here. There's not much more I could have done or should have done in this race. The race went perfectly. It's easy for people to give advice, but you have to race your own race. You have to make your own mistakes and learn from them. That's how muscle memory is built. I hope my next WIF video is me holding that golden first place winner's trophy, or it could be me being bloody promoted to Cat C where the learning curve starts all over again. But to be fair, both of them is I'm happy with. I'll tell you one thing I won't be doing, and that's slowly sitting at the front of a Cat D race, pretending it's all I've got, only then to break away last minute to take the win. That's got the same vibe as walking over the park and challenging a bunch of 10 year olds to a game of five aside. To be fair, the 10 year olds would probably destroy me at football, but yeah, that's probably a bad example, but you get my point. See you in my next video. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to hit subscribe. We, we have